This is the Bison Football Show with Coach Matt Ince. Brought to you by Gate City Bank and Pepsi. Welcome in to the Bison Football Show with Coach Matt Ince. I'm Rob Hipp, the voice of the Bison. Coach, bye week, we're here. We're inside the Nodak Insurance Company Football Performance Complex, but I've heard it called the, the off week. There's nothing off about this week, Coach. No, uh, we, we kind of termed it Bison Week. Uh, it gives us a, a week to go back, kind of look at ourselves uh, uh, from the inside out, see what's kind of caused issues, uh, do some corrective things throughout the course of the week, put a ton of time into our young players as well, uh, our, our first and second year players, getting them still uh, to retain some of the information that they got from fall camp and uh, hopefully come out of it a little bit healthier too as well. Seven games in, season continues to move fast. Seems like we talk about that every week. Five and two overall, mm -hmm. three and one in the Valley. Uh, a couple of tough losses, but despite those losses, goals, coach, always remain the same. Season far from over. Uh, NDSU has been in these situations before. Just what to you has really stood out early in this season through these first seven games? Well, there's been there's been some positives, definitely. Uh, there's been some inconsistencies at times uh, in all three phases of the game and so those are some things we need to rectify and making sure that we're getting the right people and in, in the right places I feel at uh, at NDSU personnel is such a, a critical component of, of how we play and and uh, and the the quality of play that we put on the football field so we're gonna look at that uh, in depthly or we have this week looked at that in depth and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll We'll get the right combination out there so we can continue to improve our play as the season progresses. You know, knowing that things are always a work in progress, that can be from anything, not just football, but here specifically talking football, things a work in progress as you continue to move on. Do you feel that there's been an identity that's been formed now through these first seven games? Oh, I, I think there is. Uh, I think the identity can always be evolving and, and changing. Uh, I, I think we've done a nice job running the football. Uh, we need to continue to have more consistency on third down on both sides of the ball. Uh, you know, we, we need to continue to, to, to always work on the, the basic fundamentals, uh, sustaining blocks, tackling, getting off blocks. So a lot of those things will be emphasized as we move into this th through this week and into the ne next four games. Well, you mentioned fall camp earlier and just on a positive note, has there been any surprises that maybe you think, I didn't know that was going to happen this year on a, on a positive side? Well, I mean, there's always players that show up, uh, guys who just, the light bulb comes on, you never know when it's going to happen, what what is ultimately going to lead to them playing with some clarity. Uh, I think you've seen some guys that have you know, played well early, kind of went through a little bit of a lull as we gave them more and more game planning and then started to play well of, of late. What do you typically see that changes from year to year? You've got different players, different personalities. What, what changes, Coach? Well, there's a, a lot of things have changed in the landscape of, of college football over the course of the last three years, three or four years. Um, you know, I, but I still think you know you got to find the right people, uh, people that understand what hard work is, uh, what it re what the requirements of being a Bison are all about. Um, you know, but the impact of social media, uh, the impact of of, of getting film, instant feedback uh, to our players is, is different than what it was just four or five years ago. On the flip side, I was going to ask, you already answered part of that, just some of the constants of things that remain the same. Well, Bison Pride is still the, the number one thing that we talk about within our program and being a selfless player and making sure that there's you're, you're doing it because of the uh, of the teammates, the people that surround you, uh, the previous players, and, and, and doing it for people that aren't even here yet. Um, uh, this, this program's not built on individual success. It's built on team success, uh, team accomplishments. Uh, it's never been a spotlight program, per se. Um, and then, you know, hard work, conditioning, toughness, those are things that how we practice, uh, how we play, I think, emulate those things. There's been teams out there that have struggled for decades, and that's unfortunate. That happens in any sport. For the Bison, it's been a very successful program just over the years, and and with your young people especially. How do you just help to keep things in perspective for them? Well, I think just continuing to demand Bison decision making, Bison uh, execution on the practice field, in the classroom, in the community. Uh, you know, holding them accountable for their actions, holding them accountable for the standard that we want to we want to play, we want to. We want to study. We want to. We want to give back to the community. Does that kind of help too? Because you know, talking about the success, the pressure that's on these young student athletes. Just kind of, how do you help them to manage that pressure? Well, we only talk about today. Mm -hmm. uh, we seldom go back and and we learn from the past. 
but we don't want to we don't want to harp on it we don't want to because that'll create fear that'll create anxiety moving forward seldom do we ever talk about what's around the corner we want to you know right now means everything's kind of one of our slogans that we utilize in the locker room or in the team room and making sure our kids understand that what they're doing at this moment right now today's practice tomorrow's practice you know take care of the the business at hand versus always trying to look down the road to see what's next well coach we'll step aside we'll take a break the bison football show with coach matt Ince continues after this teamwork talent dedication leadership these values that win championships on the field also build community improve lives and make a difference every single day for you for our neighbors, for our community, for a better way of life. Gates City Bank. is on and it's about to get loud For decades, NODAC Insurance Company has been serving our state's residents in good times and challenging times. We come together for the greater good, from simple acts of kindness to company-wide efforts that make a difference in our community. It's who we are, rooted in North Dakota and ready to serve when it matters most. NODAC Insurance Company, agents with answers. Welcome back into the Bison Football Show with Coach Matt Entz. I'm Rob Pipp. Coach, time to talk a little offense and defense. Sure. We'll get started on the offensive side. Running game remains the staple. It's what the Bison are known for. It's no secret. A Hunter Lipke this season, 538 yards on the ground, eight scores. Uh, he's also been involved in the passing game. Just how does that flexibility with him benefit this team so much? Well, I think, number one, it, it creates a headache to defend us. Uh, are you going to... Is he a running back? Is he a fullback? Is he a tight end? Um, you know, and, and we can get into some uh, smaller personnel formations with him, flexed out as a receiver. Um, so I think it, it creates maybe some watered down versions defensively uh, when people try to defend us. Um, and, but he also does an excellent job at all those positions. He's been a on the ball tight end. He's been off off the ball tight end. He's been a fullback, tailback. Um, you know, that flexibility allows us to get our playmakers on the field, and we can have two backs in the game. We can have three wide receivers and, and Hunter in the game. We can have two quarterbacks and Hunter in the game. Uh, and it just gives us a wide variety and a, and, a, and a deep playbook to work with every week. 
Just taking a look at stats here so far on the offensive side for this season, 34 points per game. You're averaging 246 on the ground, uh, just under six yards per rush. Is that kind of where you want to be on that rushing game? Those are pretty good numbers. Well, it, well number one goal is to win, find ways to win games. And so if, if we have to throw for 200, 250 to win a game, then that's what we have to do. But um, with some of the things that the priority or the attention we put on time of possession, being able to run the football effectively is always is always a positive, especially if we can do it well on early downs. Uh, we can get into those short yardage third downs and, and be successful and sustain drives and move the chains. And that passing game continuing to evolve. We've talked a lot about mm -hmm. Cam Miller over 150 yards per game now through the air. And that adds another dynamic layer in the game planning process. Well, it has. Cam continues to, to elevate his play. I think it's been probably three or four weeks in a row now. He's been around hovering around 70 percent completion and and we've had a couple two or three games where he's had over 200 yards passing and uh, when teams have to now can't just put their sole attention on a run game and they have to cover the entire field uh, it, it does create some problems and and uh, benefits us from emptying the box running the ball versus a light box and teams having to defend us with a little more too high defense Continue to talk a little bit on the offensive side and just in the backfield, Dom Ganella, seen glimpses of him continuing to get better. Tameric Williams, uh, Kobe Johnson coming off an injury and, and looking forward to getting him back onto the field. Just having that type of depth in the run game, how does that really help with the planning process as well? Well, I, I think our plan is our plan each week. It's just regardless of, of names and faces, uh, we feel like we're going to have the ability to have a consistent run game week in and week out because of the caliber of young man that's in that running back room. And, and, and unfortunately, in the game of football, you're going to have some injuries. Uh, Kobe's a great example because kind of banged up uh, with, with an ankle injury and, and, and anticipate him being back for Illinois State. But it just allows you to carry on with the game plan. You don't have to adjust. And, and, and all those guys are more than capable young men to, to catch the ball out of the backfield and also to carry the ball a number of times. Flipping the script and, and talking about Code Green now in defense, yep. James Kayser continues to just grow and mature at that linebacker position, leading the team in tackles. How has he continued to develop for this team? Well, James is, is a young man that's battled some injuries over the course of his career and really getting back into that that play and that that level of play that we've anticipated throughout uh, a lot of his, his career and so just confidence and and, and being healthy uh, have been really good for him um, he, he's out of position where you need to make a lot of plays playing will linebacker uh, and so it's exciting to see him you know having the success he has of late taking a look at some of the stats here on the season on the defensive side Code Green only allowing 18 points a game. Is that kind of where you want to be? Do you feel that's a good number? Or would you like, well, obviously, well, well, you want to see that less, Coach. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. We always want to be. In my, you know, when I look at numbers or analytics, 17 points is kind of the, uh, is, is the max you ever want to give up because I feel like you probably have an opportunity to win four out of five games when you do that, when you can hold people under 17. And uh, I think holding people to 17 in, in this day of age of RPO and, you know, where people are going to really force you to have to spread the f or defend the field, uh, I think that's a good number. So we need to continue to improve on that and uh, continue to stress holding people to field goals and, and, and creating some, some takeaways and some change of possessions. Passing game has been solid as far as pass defense, only allowing 136 yards per game. That's top five, I believe, in the FCS. How has that worked out this year in well, your we secondary? Have, we have a veteran group back there, uh, and they do a really nice job. Um, we were able to play a number of different people. You know, Dom, uh, Dom Jones comes in and plays a bunch of kind of hybrid outside linebacker, third nick or third safety in our, in our plan. Um, we've been able to play three or four different corners, so I think we're always fresh back there. Um, we've been able to kind of minimize some of the taxing reps that you'll see in long games but um, and then I think we're doing a decent job getting some pressure on quarterbacks at different times um, but there's always areas that we can improve on and that's what this bye week is for is trying to identify how people are attacking us uh, route concepts three by one two by two single width all those things we'll take a break and when we come back we'll hear about backup linebacker Enoch Sibomana and his support system off the field Better starts with convenience. Better starts with trust. You can trust that your pre-approval is guaranteed on closing day, which is one less thing to worry about. Better starts with saving you money. No ATM fees and no minimum balances mean how you spend your money is up to you. Because at Gate City Bank, better starts with you. Gate City Bank, for a better way of life. 
I live for adventure. Whether it's playing professional football or the solitude of being in the great outdoors. Through all my adventures, one thing I do know, life is unpredictable and full of change. Thankfully, some things remain the same. Important things like service, quality, expertise, and trust. From my childhood to today, Shields has my trust because it has been right there with me for all my adventures. Shields, right there with you. Powerful and playful. Delicate and precise. Bold and carefree. It's the way you move, and it moves us. To deliver care for your whole family, to provide options beyond the expected, to help you leave pain in the past and find your way forward. Orthopedics and Sports Medicine at Sanford Health. Welcome back into the Bison Football Show with Coach Matt Ince. In this week's Olaf Anderson's feature, WDAY's Logan Campbell speaks with backup linebacker Enoch Sibomana and his support system off the field. It's not a long journey to get back to where Enoch Sibomana's football story begins. Straight down, finish, go catch it. Fargo South is only a five-minute drive from NDSU. I used to spend a lot of, a lot of, on my own time by myself on this field, so everything was like blocked off. It's just me and the football field and the ball. The South community is like a second home. Go! The home Enoch's needed more than ever this summer. For, at first, I was just shocked. I was just standing there, kidding. Like I was just like, dang, I could not believe it. It's just like. I don't know, it didn't even feel real. It still don't feel real for real yet. Family has always been Enoch's motivation in life. Now it's embraced in my heart. It's written all over, everywhere, all over me. You see me, I'm doing it for my family. But in June, Enoch went through the unthinkable. So it was literally about five, five days after we celebrated, three years after my brother died. And then, boom, five days later, I called my brother and told him mom's passed away. Enoch has experienced death before, but nothing could prepare him for losing his mother. She was sick for a while, and she had been hospitalized for about a week and a half. She came back home, like, the first day I moved into my new place, back at school, she passed over that night. Enoch's biggest challenge wasn't on the field. It's knowing his biggest supporter is no longer by his side. Seeing, seeing Enoch, seeing him as probably one of my kids and been being with him from freshman year all the way to senior year um, and knowing knowing his, his parents and his family, and it, it's, it was tough. But during life's most difficult time, Enoch is turning to his one constant, football. When I come onto the field, it, it feels different because I feel like I'm just locked in, I'm in my zone. And I really just pour everything into the game, really. Enoch is still a student of the game as he makes the switch from safety to linebacker. But his drive to inspire others, just like his mom did, brings him back to his alma mater. Coaching, it, it's helped deal with it a lot because it takes me out of my comfort zone and it t puts me in an uncomfortable situation where I got to, like, put my emotions, put my feelings aside, put my self-pride aside and just... Give the kids, give the younger younger athletes knowledge and just teach them how to do things the right way. He's wanted to stay on task even after his mom passed away. He wanted to be back with workouts with our kids. He rushes over here after they get done with workouts and helps us for football at 7.30 and stays from 9.30 to 10.30 with our, our weight session. And a lot of our kids look up to him. For Enoch, quitting isn't an option. This is just the next chapter, making him even stronger. I haven't really done anything to make her proud yet. I'm just, I'm just starting. Coach Redshirt freshman Enoch Sibomana just continuing to, to be a guy that's growing and developing with this team and 
He's a, he's a product right here in Fargo, graduated mm -hmm. from South Fargo in 2021, hometown young man. Just uh, how important is his role on this team, Coach? Well, it's it, extremely important, and, you know, we, we try to encourage everyone to embrace their role uh, and understand your purpose. Uh, of course, Enoch wants to evolve into a starter, playing on more special teams, but right now he needs to, like I said, embrace his role because uh, that will give him greater purpose at practice. But uh, helping us on special teams, helping us with the scout team, giving us some depth at that outside linebacker position um, has has learned a ton of football since he's been here but has a ton of room to continue to grow and uh, and, and no don't really know where the ceiling is for him. How much emphasis is placed on young men that are local to this area? Well, it, it helps us when we can recruit young men out of the state of North Dakota or northern Minnesota uh, right out of our backyard. Uh, it, it's extremely helpful uh, and extremely positive. I think uh, there's good football in the state of North Dakota. In my nine years being here, it's continued to increase or improve. Uh, the the product is, is better. Uh, the talent levels are better from all, all levels of football. And so when we can get the best players out of state uh, that's a positive for our program he played a little running back in high school a little bit of safety played basketball long jump I think he's second highest in uh, or has the second position in in high school history with a 22 foot long jump yep. talk about a man that's just kind of all over the place how does all of those positions kind of tie in now as a linebacker here at NDSU well, it, 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 from an experience standpoint, I think it's it's critical. He's played a lot of football. Uh, he's seen a lot of football from different uh, different pictures, different positions. Uh, the track. Uh, you know, success is great because he's a competitive young man. It tells you that he, you know, takes pride in his product and what he's doing. Uh, he's, he's very explosive. And so we just got to get the game to slow down for him. He's kind of in the, that second year uh, transition right now. He knows enough, uh, but just not quite ready to, to be a full-time player. But he can definitely help us as we move into the last four weeks of the season. Well, this week's Great Clip, Great Question of the Game is brought to you by Great Clips. It's from Greg in Grand Forks. Coach, he asked, how have you started to utilize the new NODAC Insurance Football Performance Athletic Complex? We're a few days into it here into the bye week. Practice. Uh, moving practice in here when we have uh, uh, days where there's a, a ton of wind outside, days that there's any sort of element. Uh, but it also gives us more space to practice, too, now that we have two adjacent football fields. I mean, f for the most of uh, a fall camp, we were using two fields that were probably about a block apart from one another. So just efficiency of practice, but also being able to get out of the elements when we need to be sharp or you want to be in a teaching situation where you want to avoid wind and rain and some of the things that come with fall here in North Dakota. We'll step aside and take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about Illinois State. This one's for every sports fan who just spent the entire game explaining to someone the entire game. You've compromised enough. Pepsi Zero Sugar. This is Jack. Jack loves sports, and since he banks at Gate City Bank, he can show his spirit right on his debit card. Even better. Gate City Bank will donate $10 to his favorite local school. And when Jack's friends cheer on their favorite teams, those schools receive $10 too. Plus, Jack and his friends score every day with free ATMs worldwide. Now that's always a win. Gate City Bank, for a better way of life.
Bison Nation, this is head football coach Matt Entz. With all that goes into leading the Bison to victory, the last thing I want to worry about is the clothing I need to look and feel my best. I shop at Halberstadt's West Acres because I trust that they provide me with everything I need for meetings at the office, press conferences, and casual Bison attire. With plenty of options for sport coats, shirts, denim, suits, shoes, and accessories, I'm confident that when I need anything and everything menswear, Halberstadt's West Acres has me covered. Another rock and roll weekend. Burgers, better with Pepsi. <sighs> Welcome back into the Bison Football Show with Coach Matt Entz. I'm Rob Pip. Uh, Coach, back at it after the bye week. We've talked about it, now facing Illinois State. Just your thoughts heading into this matchup. Well, it's always a, a, a physical game. Uh, Coach Spack does a great job at Illinois State. Very competitive program, have been over the years. Uh, they're a line of scrimmage oriented football team, do a good job running the football, uh, have always have had really good offensive line, defensive linemen. Uh, and then they're, they're kind of a unique uh, uh, scheme or do some things differently on defense, uh, pressure, bring four off a side. Uh, out of their uh, oaky structure, odd, odd front structure. And so uh, there'll be some challenges, um, but it'll, it'll be good. Excited to be home again. Talking about the competition and just things in the Valley this year, things have seemed to, to, to be tough for a lot of teams as far as just getting stronger, getting tougher. I don't want to say in a negative way. These mm -hmm. teams are starting to, to just show a lot of composure out there. Just kind of your thoughts on how that continues to grow and, and the strength of the Missouri Valley Football Conference. Well, I think there's a lot of parity in the league right now. Uh, you, you can be beat any week. It doesn't matter who you are if you're not prepared. Uh, I think you're seeing a lot of prolific offenses right now. People are scoring a lot of points, uh, a lot of um, very good skill kids out there, wide receivers, running backs, quarterbacks in our league. Um, I think defenses are, are, are struggling a little bit to defend people, but uh, as you know, the defenses will catch up here in the second half of the season. It'll all balance itself out. You know, by the time we hit the last week of the year. I think something, too, to remember is the season's far from over. There's still a lot of games left to be played. Just kind of expand on that, Coach. Well, you got to take, take them one at a time. Uh, but you're right. There, there's over a month left of the season. Uh, our kids are, are still very excited about, you know, having a home game here. And going the opportunity to go 1-0 and is, is all we talk about. We try to, like I said earlier, right now means everything. This week's the most important one. I don't want them thinking about the next one. 1-0 one is what we talk about every week. Coach yeah. is always a pre Appreciate your time. Illinois State, 2.30 kickoff on Saturday. Make sure to join us, come out, be loud, and as always, horns up and go Bison. Today's Bison football show with Coach Matt Entz has been presented by Gate City Bank and Pepsi. This has been an exclusive presentation.